Hello and welcome to Cornish Walking Trails. This is Stythian's Reservoir. Paradise Private Beach. <laughs> We've seen a few posts online about the water level here. And we're in a bit of a drought. The UK has had the longest period for years of dry weather, hot too. And we wanted to come up and find out for ourselves. We actually stood on an old bridge that's normally underwater. In fact, I would normally be underwater. Let's go and investigate. So as the name suggests, Stivians Reservoir is close to the little village of Stivians, which is found between Redroof and Falmouth. It serves the local area, mainly the Campbell and Redroof area, and it's one of the bigger reservoirs for southwest water. Construction of the reservoir and the dam started in 1962, and it was eventually opened in 1967. So we're up here on the dam, and you can already see the shoreline. It's normally covered. We're going to be walking on something that is normally covered. The other thing that you can see are these like areas where there's water fizzing up and bubbling. And there's not just one. I can see one, two, three, four, five. So there's, there's at least a dozen of them. I'm quite fascinated by them. Are they to keep the water moving so it doesn't go stagnant? Ooh, let's go down here. It now looks like a well-worn path. I'm sure we're not the only people that are curious about this, locals and tourists alike. It's right beside the dam structure itself here. Being Cornwall, it's not going to be a massive construction, is it? We do everything in a more sedate style. Anyway, you can see at the top of that marker, it says nine metres, goes down eight, seven, six, and five is exposed now. So it's getting pretty low. We seem to be walking over a mixture of soil, like a clay type soil. Some gravel, the odd stone and then patches of what must have been the original moorland with a big chunk of granite there. So we're actually walking on the bed of the reservoir. Normally, in winter, water would be above our heads. <laughs> It'd be very wet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the current capacity? Well, I, I had a little look and as of four days ago, I think they were running at just under 40% capacity. It's 39.5%. Uh, I did read that there is a minimum capacity that a reservoir has, but that wasn't stated on South West Water's website. So I guess they don't want it to run completely dry because they've got equipment and structures under the water. I did see a chart though and it was sort of talking about previous years where it's been very dry and the year they picked out was 1995. Okay. But if you look at where we are now, mm. we're on course for it to be even drier and the capacity to be even lower. So we're ahead of that curve? Yeah. Gosh. And the other thing I felt was interesting, it wasn't until sort of a September or October time, but it was at its lowest. Right. And then obviously the rains come and it fills yeah. back up again. Yeah. We don't have underground water storage in Cornwall. We're reliant on surface reservoirs, which then leads to another issue that was being debated online about evaporation and the efficiency of having them on the surface. Yeah, but we do live in quite a wet part <laughs> yeah. of the country. I mean, you know, if people come down for the holidays, you know, if you're lucky enough, you get some beautiful weather. But if you live here all year, you know that throughout most of the winter months, it's really wet sometimes, it's wet. isn't it? It's get a lot of those southwesterlies that come across from the Gulf Coast in, in America with lots and lots of water. That warm air going across the Atlantic just picks up water and dumps it on us usually, doesn't so it? Generally speaking, this is full, isn't it? Yeah, and we wouldn't be walking where we're walking. I can't wait to see these uh, hedges and bridges and things up ahead.
There it is. They're walking towards it. The bridge. We found it. Okay. <laughs> Let's navigate a relatively mud-free path through this quite boggy landscape. Oh, it does feel extraordinary to be walking along here. Stumps of old trees are very visible. Literally, like someone's taken the plug all out. It is, isn't it? Yeah. It's incredible, isn't it? I didn't yeah. expect it to be like this, quite, you know, to be so empty. No, I know. And whilst it's it's extraordinary to see these things from the past, it the, they shouldn't really be seen anymore, should they? Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. But it, it's been covered for a reason, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And we're draining it dry. from a distance this bridge looks incredibly old when yeah. you actually get close up to it the top of it it's all well it looks like prefabricated sort of concrete with cement there must have been before this was a reservoir there must have been some sort of stream that went under here this was all farmland wasn't it so whether this was for the, the farmer to take his tractor over maybe if this is like concrete or cement this is probably what from the 1920s 1930s something like that yeah. maybe it well, it's not even a river is it little Obviously, stream this is, Completely covered normally, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Wow. So we're just chatting amongst ourselves saying, does it matter that it's so low? Well, I suppose it's a reservoir. The whole purpose of a reservoir is it is it, it does hold water for you until you actually need it. If it, go, um, it goes up and down over the course of the year. I should imagine, you know, people in charge would sort of say, well, there's still plenty of water here, but it begs the question to me, if we have summers like this all the time and our yeah. demand for water increases is, is you know, is, is it going to be enough? Is it enough? And who's responsible? Is it us as consumers to be more careful with water? Or is it the big faceless corporation that should put it right? I'm sure you'll have a comment online. <laughs> We've seen them already at the discussions that go on and, and sometimes I think people blame South West Water. But you know, is this, an, again, it's got to be another sort of effects of global warming. It's got yeah, to be, isn't it? I'm These hotter so. summers. I don't remember summers yeah. being quite like this when I was a kid. Well, no, I guess. I don't know. So here's one for you. So we're down to less than 40% capacity in yeah. this reservoir. We're the middle of August. Uh-huh. What if we don't get any substantial rain until Christmas? Oh, how, yeah. how low is this going to be? And when does it run out? And what do they do? I, I know, they'll get a hose pipe and we'll just fill it up again. Oh, brilliant. You should be in charge of South West Water. Should. <laughs> Didn't thought of that, have I? So we've seen pictures of this online. Can you make out a circle? People are saying it's an artwork and that it's recent. People have put it together. Nobody knows. Note to self, we need a drone. <laughs> or a very tall ladder. Yeah. We've just come across the Neolithic stones with the cut marks in them. Take a look at this. Look at these cut marks. Oh yeah. Extraordinary, isn't it? Yeah, I know. Where was oh, the other one? Follow then? me. Okay. You probably need to be this side. Do you know? I thought they would the be shadow. much further in. Yes. You know, and you see where the water is behind you there. I know. So these these must be, you know, exposed. For a good part of the year. Regularly. Yes. Yeah. There's another stone here. Yes. One, two, three. Yeah. Oh, look at that one. There's one here. Oh yes. Look at that. 
Look at the, the, they're so obvious. Do you know what, they were, you know, what were they There's for? There's another one there. It's weird, isn't it? Well, there's several theories online. One is that they were used repeatedly to sharpen tools. Hmm. Another is that it's kind of like the Nebra Sky Disc in that they were trying to mark down the, the, the constellations. Okay. The stars. But nobody knows. They reckon they're Neolithic, which is 4,000 years old. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? They're quite pitted, aren't they? Yeah, but very regular and very round. Yeah. So that's why they think it's human and not nature. Curious. I know, it's granite as well, isn't it? It's really hard material to make a mark in. Well, surely if you were sharpening tools, though, it's, I can't see how this would be used for sharpening tools. No, I don't understand that one either. And to my mind, if you were trying to create a fire or something like that, yes. you'd need something yes. to be able to put that would be stick your on and turn. That's right. Yeah. Because whether it was for that, but you'd only need the one hole, wouldn't you? Why would you need numerous ones? Well, perhaps it got too deep and you had to try a different place to get your fire going. Don't put me in charge of presenting an archaeological program. Oh, I don't know. I think we're coming up with some quite good theories and dismissing some. Made up history with Sarah and Andrew. <laughs> So I think there was about five or six little farms and small holdings that were, well, flooded. Yeah, I don't think it was a hamlet as such, was it? No. It was just literally small little farm buildings Scattered, around here. Which but, is, yeah. So. Yeah, sorry. I can see where we're going next. Yeah. You can see <laughs> where the boundaries of the, the field walls were, weren't you? Yeah. Down here in Cornwall, we love our Cornish hedges. It provides a bit of protection in the winter from those southwesterly winds that are ravaging at times. And we tend to use big heavy chunks of granite and fill it with earth and then put another layer on and they go up to six or eight feet tall with the soil being in between the stones you get grass brambles bracken hawthorn sometimes you'll see on top of a cornish hedge when there's nothing on it and no earth <laughs> this is what it looks like So being underwater, the soil has floated out from between the stones and I think these have been pushed over a little bit so that they wouldn't get in the way of any craft that might have floated on the water. And then the vegetation has rotted away. It's just left, essentially, with a pile of stones. Down there, Andrew's just filming the gateposts. Here's another one and it's survived in a more recognisable form. There's a Cornish hedge. And you can see another one just emerging from the water, perpendicular to it. So the field would have been quite small. And there's even an old tree stump. I wonder if that would have been a hawthorn, like we mentioned earlier. So it's quite a small field, isn't they it? They are tiny, aren't they? Yeah. Can you imagine trying Ooh. to... <laughs> I've just tripped over a stone. <laughs> Can you imagine what it would be like trying to make a living up here? Yeah, well, the stone it's... is rocky in the first place. The, sub the actual topsoil is quite thin, isn't it? So. It's extremely quite a harsh hard environment up here as well, isn't it? Because it's very, it's usually quite windy up here, isn't it? And it's probably colder. Yes. What's interesting is that you can actually see the other side. There's a hedge in line with the one on this side. So perhaps they joined up somehow. Perhaps they went over that little stream as it coursed its way down through the valley. It's fascinating. Let me show you this one. This one's brilliant. It's a lane, which probably explains why you can see it on the other side as well. I have spied an opportunity to do some gate leaning. Oh, I like a bit of gate leaning. Follow me. <laughs> I would have been a quite a low gate. Yeah. Unless this is built up. Yeah, it's, it's been built up, hasn't it? It's got to be, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's got to be. Why is he testing it? Why does he have to do that? Oh no, how far are you going, Andrew? Just to get that shot. I think our viewers are going to find this video revealing. Ah, yeah. 
<laughs> Very good. Any more? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> No. No, that'll kill it. <laughs> Job done, eh, Andrew? So we have noticed every now and again the reminders of human habitation. That's when I was trying, yeah, it would yeah. have been the base of a vase or something, wouldn't it? It's like an old rubbish dump. Up in a pot for jam jar. Yeah. Gosh, I wonder how old these are. I'm no good at dating this sort of thing. Oh, it was a square one. That square one you just picked up. Yeah. That looks older than anything you get today, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? This looks like a former wall, Sarah. Um, I was reading that they demolished, they actually bulldozed the properties that were here. So this might have been like an outside wall. It looks like breeze blocks, doesn't it? Mm. Have you noticed as well that there's um, bricks over here and something really personal? What's that? It's a belt. Oh! The belt. See the holes? Yes, it is, isn't it? Well, if you've lost a belt, you know, up near Stivian's yeah. Reservoir, we might have found it. It might belong to a fisherman, I suppose. But... That's Some not sort of frame. Hinge, That's a hinge. Isn't it? Yeah. Definitely a hinge. Yeah. That's an old flower pot, look. So it just really reminds you that people lived here, isn't it? Yeah, that looks like it had a hinge on it. Perhaps that was a range door. We're now walking through somebody's life, a ghost of a life that was here 50, 60 years ago. Pottery again. This was a house, Andrew. This was a house. I wonder what the people that lived here made of all this when they found out the reservoir was going to be built then. Well, that's a very good link because we actually have a book with us that we never thought in a million, in a month of Sundays that we would ever get the opportunity to use. It's a really well written book and it's written by somebody that was actually a child here his house used to be up by the dam and it was demolished as part of the scheme to build this reservoir. So this is the book I was talking about. It's called Little Ambella and the Lost Valley by Martin Opie. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a picture of the old boy when he wrote it. We reckon it was printed in about the year 2000. And the first introduce, the introduction in this is lovely. He says, Little Ambella most certainly lies close to the dam wall itself. It was a typical Cornish small holding comprising a cottage without buildings surrounded by some 14 acres of land set in what was a beautiful valley on the outskirts of the village of Stithians in Cornwall. So he lived there from 1943 and he's got a lovely chapter in here called Memorable Moments. Let me read this to you. Are you sitting comfortably? It was a late summer evening and my mother remained downstairs reading a book with light provided by an oil lamp after the rest of the family had turned in for the night. As usual, mother let her dog outside for 10 minutes before closing up and herself retiring to bed. That 10 minutes brought about an extraordinary event. Unknown to anyone, an adder had entered our house through the open door on that balmy summer evening. Every morning before my father carried out the milking, his first job would be to light the fire in the Cornish range. This enabled the family to start another day with a pot of tea. On looking inside the oven, he was confronted with a hiss. Okay. I can hear his voice of yelling as if it was only yesterday. There's an adder in the oven! <laughs> I ran downstairs with my mother who asked my father what he intended to do about it. He replied simply, I have no alternative but to roast it alive, otherwise I will be bitten. No. The fire was charged up to the full as we sat quaking, listening to the thumping of the poor adder inside the increasingly hot oven. After about an hour, when all was still, father opened the oven door. And there for all to see was the shriveled up cooked adder, which was duly removed with a hand brush and fire shovel. 
Oh, no. Can you imagine waking up? That's awful. <laughs> Poor Adder. <laughs> okay. I can't believe that. Okay. Wow. So one last thing that we'll read from this little book. It's a chapter called The End is in Sight. One evening, Father returned home after a visit to the village. He appeared ill at ease and rather sad. His discussion with my mother made my ears prick up. He said that it appeared a new reservoir was likely to be built around our home and we must prepare for our future as the end was now in sight. If it was true, we obviously had no choice, but none of us wanted to leave the valley. All continued as normal for the next three months until one morning, workmen appeared close to our home where their task was to dig trial boreholes. Their equipment recorded the flow of the water down the stream. And it was at that point that I realised little Ambella was doomed. A little map in the back of the book then. Yeah, so that's where the car park is and the dam wall. Right. And this is on the earth side, so the water's in here. And he reckons that little Ambella would be just at the foot of the dam wall. Gosh, it's really close to the dam. Yeah, so they just scat it down. Oh, it's a shame. So, little Ambella, an arrow, indicates where he feels his house was. And he poignantly, he says, can the present visitor walking across the dam feel the presence of little Ambella? So we hope you've enjoyed our video today. What was your favourite bit? I think for me it was actually finding those cup-shaped stones, yeah, those Neolithic stones. I, I didn't actually think we were going to find them because there's so many stones here. But that, that little book about little Ambella, yeah. it really makes it personal, doesn't it? And the Quite loss when, when this was built. So it kind of makes you ask that question, who is responsible for our water? Is it a faceless organisation? Should they just build more dams and, and obliterate homes? Or is it us? Is it how we use water? Let us know in the comments, I'm sure you will. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.